Hello everyone. Today we're talking about an important concept regarding cybersecurity and that's social engineering. Because it doesn't really matter whether you have all the IDSs in the world or whether you have a firewall that protects against any possible technical attack, you will always have a user that just clicks on any link that opens any attachment, visits any website, um, and these users are always or will always be the weakest link in any cybersecurity strategy. Um, you could theoretically um, discriminate between human-based social engineering, that's direct human-to-human -human interaction, which is what you have um, when, you're, when you're researching in the field and you want to gain access to a company, for example, by pretending to be someone of the same company, this would be human-based social engineering because you actually talk to other humans. And computer-based social engineering are everything we've covered in previous videos, um, for example, phishing, smishing, and so on. So every, every time there is a computer between the attacker and the victim. We have three basic principles, and then we'll go into the actual principles uh, of social engineering but the first three main ones are trust meaning the attacker needs to build trust uh, with the victim so if the victim trusts the attacker it's possible to socially engineer them um, deceit is another important weapon uh, if you if you look at the slide you can see it's something that happens quite often you just pretend to work there and you just build upon the fact that other people want to help you uh, rather than ignore you. Another thing is pressure, uh, which we've also seen in, in a previous video regarding an Activision hack, that you pressure people into doing as you say, because they fear your authority, so it works when you wear a uniform, for example, or they fear for their job, which, uh, as I've said, has happened uh, in previous actual uh, cyber attacks. Now we'll go over the six principles of social engineering by Robert Cialdini in his, well, now very famous book, Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion. And the first one is likability. People like people who are like them. So if someone is similar to you in any way, and this could be very mundane things such as wearing the same band shirt as you do or wearing the same um, kind of hairstyle you do, people tend to like people that are similar to them. Next one is authority, which we've also uh, mentioned briefly during the when I was talking about pressure. Um, people succumb to authority, um, especially if it's, for example, their supervisor. If That's why a lot of phishing scams um, try to impersonate a supervisor of somebody and therefore... Um, executing their authority or their perceived authority over the employee that scammed. This is something that has happened, for example, at the Activision hack I've hinted uh, on previously. Next principle is reciprocity. If you do something for somebody else, they are very likely to respond likewise. So if you are helpful to someone, they might or they are more inclined to be helpful to you in the future. Uh, hackers or attackers can use this to their advantage. Another famous um, principle is scarcity. This is something a lot of brands, including, for example, Apple famously do, uh, where they just artificially limit their products. So in order that people actually stand in queue in order to get them, because otherwise they might miss out on the newest product. The um, next principle is social consensus, meaning that people do what's socially um, expected of them and what others do. Meaning when you work in a company and the cybersecurity climate is such that everybody just opens every attachment willy-nilly, then you will you will very, very likely do that as well. That's uh, happened, for example, at the Blind Eagle attack on Colombia and Ecuador, where people just download and um, open everything because they used to do this and it, it's basically expected of them. The final one is consistency, meaning that people behave in a way they've previously 
behaved. So people change their behavior rather seldomly, which means um, if people do something one way, they will continue to do this. And this example here, I always help my fellow citizens. Um, it's maybe a bit artificial, but attackers can actually use this principle to their advantage in order to gain, for example, access to certain documents. This is uh, also something we have seen during the OneNote exploit. Um, you'll find the links to all these stories in the description of the video. Um, but just to just so you know that all these principles have been successfully applied in the real world during real attacks. Here again, I have listed the six principles, and um, I, I encourage you to read um, the book. It's it's very 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 interesting and very informative. Uh, no social engineering video is complete without mentioning phishing, which is the most popular and most dangerous social engineering concept used. Um, has been used in different attacks, which we've mentioned before, the Red Eyes um, attack on, uh, I think it was like a, a South Korean um, word processor and the OneNote exploit and the Blind Eagle attack. And a variant of this is smishing, where you don't use emails, what you do with phishing, but you use SMS or text messages, uh, which has happened, for example, at the Activision hack. The last point I want to make is a famous study conducted um, with this attractive young lady here called, well, it's not a real woman, but the researchers dubbed her Emily Williams. And what they did is they applied for certain positions in a, in a well, for, for open jobs at various companies. And within minutes of application, uh, of applying to the job, they've got like hundreds of uh, requests on LinkedIn and on Facebook and because they've created all these fake profiles and all this fake personality of this woman and people were like eager to get in contact uh, to her of course predominantly or probably exclusively male uh, co-workers or potential co-workers and they were able to exploit a vulnerability because they would have gained access much earlier than like before even signing the contract and so they could upload some malware and i think they even were able to perform remote like a, a reverse shell um, the researchers did the same thing with an attractive male profile. However, they didn't have uh, any success with it. So this is something that is uh, also very important to keep in mind. Uh, you can scam men very easily by using pictures or profiles of attractive women. So for all the men out there, be uh, and I know I think 60% of my listeners are male. So be aware when beautiful women want something of you. It's It's most likely or let's say to a very high uh, probable degree uh, scam. So thanks for watching. Uh, uh, thanks for watching this video on this very important concept of social engineering. Uh, I've said in previous videos and I will say it over and over again, m people are the weakest link in any cybersecurity strategy and you need to take care of this. And technical solutions are fine and they are great and they can be compromised of course, but for the most part they are very, very secure people and how they act are not. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.